like the end of the world. There was destruction everywhere. People scrambled around in hysterical panic. Cars and buses and taxis were slamming into each other by the second. Mass confusion reigned here in downtown Metropolis like never before. And the cause of all this? Uh, no. I don't know what got into me. I, I didn't mean to cause all that destruction. I'm sorry. So sorry. The time, four in the morning. The place, an apartment at 344 Clinton Street in Metropolis, where newscaster Clark Kent has been suffering through a night of fitful sleep. Phew. That was some nightmare. The city looked like a tornado swept through it. The only trouble was, I was the tornado. After waking up from something like that, I could use a breath of fresh air. The man that gets out of bed is accustomed to having the problems of the world upon his massive shoulders, whether asleep or awake. For this man, opening the window in his pajamas, is secretly the mighty Superman himself. Quick, quick, Tom. Buildings demolished. Cars piled up. People scrambling around in mass confusion. Then it wasn't a dream. It was all horribly real. In stunned disbelief, the Man of Steel switches on his TV in search of some sort of explanation. And here at the scene, our cameras clearly show the extent of the destruction, indicating it was truly a miracle that no lives were lost, although a small number of people were injured. And as unthinkable as it is to believe, all the eyewitnesses named the same culprit, Superman. That's impossible. I was here asleep. The mayor and law enforcement officials are said to be meeting right now to discuss what sort of action should be taken against Superman for this despicable display of superpowers on a rampage. As soon as a decision is reached, WGBS-TV will relay the information to you viewers. This is Lois Lane, here in the wake of chaos on 3rd Avenue, returning you now to our studios. Thank you, Lois. We'll have more news after this commercial word. Friends, do you ever worry about perspiration odor? At least well, I think I was here asleep. Is it possible, conceivable, that I sleep, walked out of my apartment and went berserk as Superman? Could the memory of my rampage be so unbearable I blotted it out, thinking it was only a dream? But wait, I've just been handed a bulletin. A small army of police have surrounded the laboratory retreat of arch-criminal Lex Luthor. All efforts to force him out in the open have been stymied by Luther's arsenal of super-scientific weapons. Ordinarily, the police force would broadcast a plea to Superman for help. But in view of his recent wild rampage... If it was me on that rampage, I should turn myself in. But not while Lex Luthor is still at large. Bringing in that fiend may be my last official act as Superman, but it's got to be done. And now... Meanwhile, at the scene of the crisis, a deserted pavilion left behind from the 1968 Metropolis World's Fair. Come out with your hands above your head, Luther. We've got you completely surrounded, and more reinforcements are on the way. You can call in the entire police force of Gotham City while you're at it, but there's no way any of you can break through the impenetrable force field that projected around the pavilion. No way! We've got the heavy artillery set up now, Chief. All right, give the men the order to fire. One of them connected. I mean, we can't even see that crazy barrier, but it stops anything short of an A-bomb. Don't kid yourself. It's probably Megaton proof along with everything else. I don't know what we can... Superman! I'm here to help. I don't know if I should try to arrest you myself or call the Marines first. I won't offer any resistance, Chief, as long as you let me arrest Luthor first. But how do we know you won't turn wild again? I don't know... Let's face it, Chief. Nothing we've got is going to get us inside that barrier. Superman's the only guy on Earth who can crack it. Okay, Superman, you're on. Do what you do best. My pleasure, Chief. Right forward and point right range. He went right through it like it wasn't even there. Why do you think they call him Superman, Chief? Glad you could make it, Superman. I've been expecting you. What kind of no good are you up to this time, Luthor? And what's the purpose of the big gizmo sending a ray beam up into space? That gizmo, as you put it, has been steadily stripping away a certain vital layer of the Earth's atmosphere for weeks now. What are you doing? Melting your infernal machine into a puddle with my heat vision. <laughs> but it's too late, you cape fool. The damage has already been done. What was it, Luthor? 
The ionosphere? The ozone layer? No, 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 no. It was something not even you have heard of, Superman. The Zota layer. But you'll never see it for yourself. My machine has destroyed it. You deluded maniac! But don't be alarmed. No one on Earth will be harmed, at least not directly. The only person who was protected by the Zota layer was you. You've got exactly three seconds to start making sense. There's a peculiar type of radiation out there that not even you are immune to, Superman. It affects your mind whenever you relax or go to sleep. Turns you into a wild man and makes you go absolutely berserk. Great Scott! The destruction tonight in Metropolis... That's right, old foe. It was you. And with the Zota layer gone, you can bet it will be happening a lot more often. <laughs> Superman did it! He banged Luther! Luther's not moving, is he? Just unconscious. I knocked him out cold. He's all yours. Thank you, Superman. No one else could have done it. I don't know what to say. Say you'll put me under armed guard, Chief, and that you'll notify the President and the Pentagon at once. I'm afraid I've become a national menace. It doesn't take long for the nightmarish news to sweep the world like a shockwave. The mighty man of steel, once a super champion, admired by billions, has proclaimed himself a wild man, afraid of going on an uncontrollable rampage at any moment. This is Lois Lane for WGBS. Ordinarily, Clark Kent would be delivering this newscast, but being such a close friend of Superman's, he has been too upset to report in for work. And that is easy to understand considering today's top story. President Fairlane spent the morning in conference with the nation's top scientists to discuss perhaps the greatest problem mortal men have ever had to bear, the fate of Superman. And even as a distressed Lois delivers her grim newscast, the chief executive and the mightiest man on earth are having a somber conference in the Oval Office of the White House. People are afraid. Everyone knows now about the Zoda Lair and what can happen now that it's gone. All they have to do is look at those ten blocks in Metropolis you leveled to the ground. I'm sorry, sir. Not as sorry as I am, for the world will soon be about what I have to ask you to do. None of our leading scientists knows any way of restoring the Zota Lair that Luthor removed. So I'm afraid we're only left with one alternative. Yes, sir. Superman, I must ask you to exile yourself from the planet Earth. Although your tremendous services to mankind will be gravely missed, I can fathom no other way of guaranteeing you won't go off on another destructive rampage. Unfortunately, neither can I, sir. Then it's settled. Not quite, Mr. President. You realize, of course, that as soon as I'm off the earth, Lex Luthor will use his super scientific wizardry to break jail. And with me gone, he'll do his best to rule the world with his fantastic machines. Hmm. You're right. And without a Superman to protect us, that bald-headed genius would probably succeed. Perhaps I should consult my advisors again. No need, sir. The solution is simple. Have Luthor exiled from the Earth along with me. I'll make sure he never returns to menace anybody. It's the only way. Yes, the only way. It takes only one scant week for Superman to construct a two-passenger interstellar rocket. Because he works without rest or relaxation, lest his mind succumb to the deadly radiation that has made him a potential wielder of doom. One week is all it takes for the career of the greatest superhero of all to come to an end. And it's a beautifully executed launch, ladies and gentlemen, being broadcast all over the world simultaneously via satellite. Never in the history of mankind have so many people joined to watch one single event. And what a tragic event it is. The villainous Lex Luthor will not be missed, but Superman, watching Superman leave is the greatest loss the human race has ever faced. How we will bear the world We'll be free of Earth gravity in another 9.7 seconds. Enjoying the ride, Superman? For a man leaving the world behind him, Luthor, you don't seem very concerned. To tell you the truth, Superman, life on Earth would become quite boring without your meddling to contend with. Superman, you're breaking your straps. You're not supposed to get up until we finish climbing through the atmosphere. Well, you see, old fool, I've just changed my mind. I'm going back to Earth, alone. What? What are you talking about? I'm talking about leaving, Luthor. I'm going to crash through the hull and leave you. But... 
but you can't. You promised if you break the hull, the ship will explode and I'll die. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Wait, Superman! No! And moments later at the White House, as the news of the spaceship's destruction reaches a dismayed President Fairlane by phone. The ship did what? I don't believe it. How could Superman have fouled up like that? Superman, what are you doing back here? What did you do to Luther? Nothing, yet. As if you didn't know. But they told me you abandoned the ship, left Luther to die in space. I left an android in space, an artificial duplicate of Luther, exact in every detail, except one detail, its builder neglected. When we were taking off, the fake Luthor was completely unaffected by the force of the G's on takeoff as we broke free of the Earth's atmosphere. The real Luthor would have shown the stress on his face. Incredible. But if Luthor wasn't in that ship, where is he? Nice try, Luthor. But you're just not presidential material. What are you saying? You're not the real President Fairlane. You're Lex Luthor, wearing a latex mask and a voice adapter. Very clever, Superman. I really thought I had you this time, but I've still got the upper hand. How's that? Only I know where I've hidden the real President Fairlane. And unless you let me go free, I'm not talking. Is that right? Oh, my face. It seems so, so hot under this mask. I, I've got to take it off. You'll never make it, Luthor. I'm using my heat vision to melt your President Fairlane mask. Please, stop. It feels like ten sunburns at once. The mask is so hot and gooey. Sure, I'll stop. Just tell me where the real president is. All right, you win. I'll take you to Fairlane. Just turn off the heat. Oh! oh. The next day, after President Fairlane is safely back in his office and Lex Luthor is safely behind bars, let's join Clark and Lois. I don't get it, Clark. If there never was a soda layer in the atmosphere, what was that machine in Luthor's hideout Superman destroyed? It was really a dream projector. Luthor beamed it at Superman's head when he flew overhead on patrol. And that night, he dreamed he went on a rampage. But there really was a rampage. Ten blocks were leveled. By a Superman android Luthor created with very limited strength. That's why Luthor chose ten blocks that were mostly condemned buildings and ready to come down anyway. Clark, why is it you're so incredibly well-informed when it comes to Superman? Just doing my best to stay on top of the news, Lois. Don't worry. One of these days, a scoop will come your way. Wait and see. Just for that, Clark, Kent, lunch is on you. 